So this uh, cab chassis you know, that's the E2000 behind me is getting a... Well, the engine in it at the moment has a big gouge out of the cam. Something went through the oil or... You know, something like that. So... It actually caused an oil leak under the front cam cap. Which, uh... Oil leaking out of the oil journals around the cam under the cap actually leaked outside the motor because that front cam cap on the FE motors is like exposed out of the rocker cover a bit the rocker cover goes around it and yeah, the oil was leaking out of there because it was so damaged and so the owner of this car he likes his uh, turbo masters so I think the plan of this one is a turbo FE so that's what we're doing for this um, 626 turbo bottom end van head um, number 3236 and a VJ7 turbo off a 99 so that's what we're going to be doing for this car. Um, I know, we're pretty busy with other projects at the moment, but or other cars, I shouldn't say projects, but we don't really do many projects, mostly just repairs. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to get stuck into it, probably pull the motor out later today, the motor and gearbox, we're going to drop them out the bottom. Just put the crane in through the cab, lower it all down, because we're it's got a recode gearbox and clutch and everything to go into it. So that stuff's all getting dropped out. So that's the plan. Turbo FE in a most van. It's been done before. So it's usually been done with a fuel injection, but the customer didn't really have the pockets to go to um, a microtech or something and pay for labour for it to be installed. So yeah. Alright, so I started disconnecting a few things, um, just some wirings, coil wiring, alternator wiring, the intake, stuff like that. I'm currently draining the coolant, I've disconnected, what else? Yeah, just vacuum lines and intake and shit I think, yeah. On the left hand side of the engine, and then on the right hand side I haven't done anything, so that'll be, you know, some wiring, coolant lines, shit like that. AC lines. Um, you're gonna need to drop it down and then back a bit because there's a gap at the back of the head that you're gonna be able to, that you're gonna need because the pulleys actually don't clear this frost cr front cross member, so it's gonna have to come down a tiny bit and then back. Uh, probably gonna have to take up that whole gap that's between the head and the frame there, and then drop it down. Fuck, this is an oily piece of crap engine. Just oil leaks from everywhere. So messy. I've got a new fuel pump though. <laughs> Alright. I'll update when I've made some more progress later on. Alright, so uh, gearbox oil is draining. Everything's disconnected. Trans mount's disconnected. Um, there's only two bolts left on each engine mount because there's four that hold the engine mount brackets to the chassis rail so I'm two on each side trans mounts like undone but it's it rests in place until you take the weight off it um, and everything's disconnected so just going on lunch now and then everything's gonna be dropped out after lunch should be out soon enough Now the real fun begins. Time to give this old truck a new heart. First step's done, old engine's out. Alright, so what we've got here is a 929 rear wheel drive turbo manifold, a VJ11 or whatever, the front wheel drive MX6, or no, this is the front wheel drive 626, as in like 
early 626 GC, I think it is. Anyway, um, what you can do is the turbo usually looks like that, and it, if you put this turbo on this manifold, it points straight up. Now, what you can do is rotate it to to that position there and the wastegate bolt back up and then you've got that then you can make your pipe to go up over to the intake manifold now for this one I've altered the shape of it to sit like this is how I've done it it's alright so that's on the car I've altered this one to sit like that and it goes across the joint of the turbo there across the flange and then up and back that way. Now that's, I've bent that quite severely, but hopefully it'll be okay. It shouldn't be okay, it's not really kinked in any way. And then this one here goes like so. That one used to bend down. Used to bend downwards like that, towards uh, where, where the exhaust would go. So I bent that one straight, I might cut that one down. But there's the two water. Now the oil feed, I'm going to use the feed from the old hard line and remake one out of brake line and some adapters on the other side the oil drain I'll update you when I figured that one out but so far I'm going to bolt all that together bar the oil feed and drain so the water lines are done I need to find some new hardware to bolt this together and yeah the waste gets all hooked up so that'll be alright so that's how I'm going to do that so there's the rear wheel drive turbo setup for the it's a 626 motor with the distributor at the back going in a van. Alright, so what I've done with the oil feed is this, I think it's the, um, got an adapter that goes from the turbo thread to, I think, 3AN, and then from 3AN there's an adapter back to one of these again to the turbo thread so what I'm going to do is screw this in there and then it's a little 90 degree and I've bent and manipulated the original front wheel drive hard line to made up with the other side of that and I'll show you that once I've got the manifold on all the uh, all the coolant lines and stuff are routed, turbo's bolted on Alright, so this is the engine that's going in that truck. The reason this was around is just because well, it, it was sitting in here but it wasn't hooked up to anything. It's going in that truck anyway, this is just a parts truck. So this engine is a 626 turbo engine out of a GC, so it's an FE2 litre, not the 2.2. Um, it's got a 929 rear wheel drive turbo manifold on it. It's got all of the front wheel drive fittings and water lines. And no, no, the only part I added was a little 90 degree adapter in there. And this used to come straight down and I, I bent that around like that. With a line bending tool. So there's the oil feed. That's the oil drain. I know it's a little bit um like horizontal but I can't do much about that. It's sort of as tight as I can get it, hopefully that works alright. The water lines I bent out just to clear the exhaust pretty much. And they go over to there. One goes to that water pipe. So that's the that'll be the cold pipe, this small one, this bottom one, and the hot pipes there up to behind the thermostat um, yeah there are the coolant lines, that's all the lines done I need to make an exhaust, a downpipe and we're adding on the adapter plate for the Weber DGV carb because that's what's going on it it's going to be a blow through carbureted setup um, need to change the uh, harmonic balancer over to the V-drive setup off the truck run the trucks AC compressor and alternator swap all those brackets over um, need to make a radiator well I need to make both if anyone knows where I can order this piece this water neck 
um, that'd be great. If not, I have a Navara one that looks pretty similar and I think if I have a little flange between them, I should be able to make that one work. If not, I'll make my own flange and weld up a pipe um, for this. I think I'm just going to run a hard line over here and shoot it straight through there between the alternator and the intake manifold straight through there should fit under the intake manifold and above the AC compressor when it's over there but yeah that's the plan for this it'll be running blow through Malpassy fuel reg Weber DGV it's got the VJ fucking whatever <laughs> I don't even know what turbo this is actually it's a it's a VJ7 so it's a little stocker it's not a VJ11 she'll be right uh, just blow through. In fact, it had a boost T on it on that turbo, but I took it off because let's face it, blow through you don't want to, the intake temps getting too hot. It's not going to be non intercooled for now, at least. Um, uh, to run the 626 head, I'm going to have to notch the back of the cab a tiny bit and just below at the back of the seat there. That's just to. um. He said when it was in this one that it fit, but he wasn't able to turn it, so just got a notch. There's a lip way up there that I got a notch. Um, yeah. I mean, it's fairly straightforward. It's not drop in. I did have to modify every line on that hot side, and I'll have to make a downpipe. So it, coolant lines, all that sort of stuff. It's not, it really isn't drop in. Realistically, you could have done this with a um, a rear wheel drive FE motor, not a turbo motor. But he had this lying around and it's freshly reconditioned, never been ran. But it's been sitting for four years because some guy promised to do it in this truck. And well, as you can see, I didn't take anything out of this. All I did was drop the motor out the bottom. It was just sitting in there nothing just a couple of bolts holding it in that's all it was he didn't do any work when it when i dropped it out it had a front wheel drive manifold on it turbo was flipped around the other way nothing lined up you know at least this way the exhaust <laughs> takes a face in the right direction and we can also run the factory ac ac and alternator and the factory v, v belt setup with the clutch fan and that bracket that goes around the front of the motor to hold the to run the fan but yeah so I think the last footage you saw was me dropping the motor out of that and then I dropped the motor out of this one too but that's you just saw it that one why do you need to see it twice and that's that and this will be the first first build video on this Mazda truck should be sick peace out guys have a good week